Hey, welcome everybody. This is TJ with ShopBot Tools, and today we're going to look at zeroing multiple bits, and and we're going to try to do this all in the same location. And this way, when we are looking at cutting different depths, as far as maybe we have a large area clearance tool, or we're going to add a beveled edge around something, this is the way we assure that we get the correct depth for each bit in the same file. So this is what we're looking to do in today's training, is be able to use a larger bit out here for cleaning out the large area and then using a smaller bit to get in between the letters here. And what happens a lot of times is people can see a rough edge here. Now this first picture is what I want to teach you how to do today. And here's some examples of, you know, you are going to get some bit marks. But what we want to avoid is stuff like this, where it's a really deep cut between the two. So when you're changing bits between a larger cut and a smaller one, or even if you're doing a beveled edge around something. So what we're going to look at today is a couple tips of zeroing out multiple bits in the same location on the material. So here's what's usually happening in cases like this is, do matter what kind of cut it is that you have, it's where you're zeroing your Z. So you know, material isn't consistently the same thickness all the way around. So if you're using one bit and then you do a bit change, uh, if you don't zero in the same spot, you could be at a different thickness of your material, and that's what's going to throw off getting those different cut depths. So what we'll look at here today is actually setting it up for the same spot. So right now, this is what happens. You zero, you put a new bit in, you re-zero, uh-oh, it's not quite lining up. I've got some sort of discrepancy in my Z height. I really don't want to have to sand that. I can clearly see it's the difference here. And whether it's different end mills that you're using for pocketing between letters or it's a beveled edge that you're putting around, whatever it may be, is we're looking at how do we zero different bits and get them to the same cut depth and get around material discrepancies. All right, just to set the scene, I wanted to show you the file. Nothing fancy that we're working with here, but I just wanted to point out that when we do go to save this, that we do have four different types of bits. We've got a half inch straight an eighth inch straight, a V90, and a quarter inch. So we have four different bits, and we do have a lot of spots on this file where we need to make sure our Z heights are all matching. So we're going to go out on the shop bot, and we're going to pick a spot down here in this bottom left corner, and this will be a spot where we'll mark it with an X, and that's where we'll make sure we zero all four bits in the same part of that material. Because there are spots that are crucial. You have the eighth inch and the half inch that are used for this pocket depth. You have a V90 that's used for putting the beveled edge on the inside and the outside of this. And then obviously your through cut because you want to make sure it goes through. So let's take a look at this out on the shop bot. Next thing I'm doing is picking my spot where I'm going to zero, which is two comma two. And that's where I'm going to mark that with an X so I know exactly where that spot is. And we'll also use our control software after we've zeroed out our X and our Y. And we'll move to that same position right here to make it exact. Obviously, I put my reference mark with the pencil on the table. But I'd like to go to 2-2. Two, two. I'm going to go to that position. And so I don't have to type this in every time. I'm going to use Memorize Locations. And I'll right-click on this one. And we're just going to call this our Sign Z0. So now at any point, I can, wherever I may be out here on the table after a cut, if it goes back to the default 0, 0, at any time I can just hit 1. It's going to ask to make sure I'm okay. I have my safe Z height, make sure I, my bit is up above anything on the table. And when I hit OK, it moves back to that 0, 0 spot. So I will use this in between every bit change. I will go ahead and bring up the keypad or I could manually type it in, depending on what version of the software and whatnot that you're using. But keypad and K, K1 is my sign Z spot, and that will go to my 2-2 every time. X marks the spot. All four bits will be zeroed in that same location where we know the material is that same thickness. X on the plate, so I'm zeroing the same part of the plate. Now, just simple thing here. Every time you change the bit, knock the dust out spring it apart, spring it back together before you put your bit in. Make sure that's together. Now I slide over my X because I'm at spot that I set up with my keypad. I'm using the X on my Z0 plate. And then there we go, every time, same spot. 
All right, so game time. First bit's in, we start cutting. This would be our large area clearance tool. The half inch bit is nice because now I can aug out hard and fast. I still need the eighth inch bit to get in between those letters. So that's the whole point of this is crucial, is to get that eighth inch bit and that half inch bit to the exact same cut depth. So now I'm going back to the same spot which is that we set up as 2-2. Two, two. And again, every time I change the bit, I'm, I want to really emphasize that in this training today too. A lot of people I see have been neglecting that. Take that collet and nut apart. Spring it back together before you put that back in the, in the spindle. Put your next bit in and then use the same routine. I got X on the Z0 plate. I've got X on the book board. I use my keypad and set up a memorized location. I'm getting rid of any material discrepancies as far as material thickness. So that big bit augged hard and fast. Now my little bit's just got to do cleanup around the edges and where the half inch bit couldn't go. So this one is two passes. So it does the first pass around. And then we'll do the, the second pass down in. But you can see right there in that V and then in between those letters where we did need the smaller bit. So that little eighth inch bit now is at full depth and you don't see the difference of where it lined up with the half inch bit. A nice clean, a couple machine marks you may have to clean up, but as far as a line all the way around like our first example in that circle, that's not there because we got rid of that discrepancy by zeroing in the same spot. So it's a really neat technique for doing that. And same thing here, i got to put a beveled edge around. Even if I wanted to say I wanted to add a prism tool path to the letters, I'd want to make sure that I had this bevel in the same spot as far as the bit height for the other three bits that I'm using. So same thing, it's all routine now. However many bits you have, just keep going back to that same spot. Re-zero in the bit the same way every time. And the more you can keep doing things the same, the better it's going to be for you getting rid of any issues or discrepancies that you have. So I was doing the bevel, and it does it on the outside, does it on the inside. Don't ever stick your hands in the machine while it's running. I'm a trained professional, which means trained, uh, not supposed to be doing what I'm telling you to do, but I just wanted to show you there that, that little ripple comes off with that beveled edge. And now we're on the fourth bit, and you can see how good I've gotten, how fast I can be. Look at that, one hand on, off, boom, back and forth. <laughs> But same thing every time. Go back down, re-zero it, and then here we are with our final cut going around, which is the cutout. So all four bits zeroed in the same spot. This got rid of any of the little machine marks that you would see. Saves on sanding, obviously, and, and, and gets you the results that we require from these machines so as you can see just a little little touch up of sanding but not bad a couple chip outs just because of the material that i'm using but overall that is what i would call a success so the key here was to zero all four of the same bits on the same portion of the material that way i don't ever have to worry about different material thicknesses throughout this same thing with the z zero plate the first bit was the half inch end mill. It could not get in between certain letters or down into the groove, so we had to do a bit change. That was using the large area clearance tool in the pocket. To have done this whole thing with the eighth inch bit would have taken two, almost two hours, where it took less than 20 minutes with the bit change. You are going to get some machine marks from time to time. Uh, that could be a number of other factors, but what we're not seeing here along the edge is issue with the different bits this could have been you know just the the spindle being out of square a little bit the spoil board not being perfectly zeroed uh, so there's other factors we can get into with some other tutorials but I saw this was all I had for machine marks something I can easily sand up but there will be sometimes some machine marks left in your material but what I do not have is an edge all the way around all my letters and borders from where the bit change was and same thing here now zooming in on this one you can see even way in here on these where the bevel lined up too I have a nice clean edge all the way around on this sign hey I'd like to thank everybody for attending today's training for other trainings please visit our training link here on our website 
Also, our forum is a great resource for information and talking with other shot botters out there. Same with all of our other pages here. If you're looking for information or support or any other stuff, our website is a wonderful resource. So, hey, have a happy Thanksgiving, everybody, and we will see you next time.